Hi guys and girls and welcome to this quick demonstration and security overview of Windows 10 Application Guard coming in to the next version of Windows which is 1709 which is in October. Basically it's a technology that containerizes Internet Edge oh, sorry Edge, um, and allows you to isolate completely internet browsing. Um, allowing, of course, if you wanted to, people to save through to the host operating system, but for those environments that require the utmost isolation, this is a solution that uh, the enterprise users can use. So, um, without ado, I'll hand over to Microsoft. Place, and you know we deal with these different actors, and Brad talked about th this this morning. Um, you know we're seeing actually fraud and theft with or organized crime starting to parallel. Um, what we see with the nation state actors and we th see like ransomware starting to take over a lot of the enterprises and that's that's a direct reflection of that issue. So the anatomy of attackers also the way we think about this is their playbook is well known at this point right and Brad talked about the fact that 90 percent of the intrusions that happen happen through phishing mails. You know, once they get in and get a foothold within a single machine, then they move there laterally across the enterprise and expand their footprint, and then it's the end game. And all these things that they can do, uh, we all know way too well within the enterprise. And what we want to do um, with the technology that we're investing in at Microsoft and Windows is we want to change the playbook. We want the defenders not to be able just to deal with us building a higher wall. We want to change the landscape completely to where they have to rewrite their pl playbook. So the attacks coming in through phishing are hard to stop. We get that. And the Verizon uh, report from 2016, the data breach report, you know, it showed us you send a mail as a hacker to 100 tar targets in a company, 30 people are going to open that. 12 are actually going to click on the link or open the attachment. And unfortunately, they're all going to do that um, within about three minutes. So let's take a look at an example of how these attacks look in the wild. So we all understand the attackers are getting better and better at crafting mails that entice the users in the enterprise to click. Um, they write about themes that are related to them. They're very difficult, actually, for users that aren't security pros to dissect and determine what's a malicious link and what's not. So again, we looked at the data from the Verizon attack, and we already know that 12% of users are going to click on that link. What happens next is really under the control of the attacker. So in that case, you're going to get redirected to a site that the attacker owns. Attack software is running on the website, so if you have a vulnerability in your browser, it's going to get exploited here, and then you're redirected onto the real site that you were trying to go to in the first place. That all happens so fast that an average user doesn't detect that. So this really is the issue. These websites look completely normal to an average user, and they're tricked. They don't understand that there's all this cruft lying behind that page on that first page they hit that's looking to do no good. And it's all too real for the enterprises. The damage is, is real, as we see here. And I point out a few of these. So what can we do to defend against this? Microsoft security posture is really about being able to protect, detect, and respond to these threats. We do that from the cloud. We also do that within the enterprise. And we're focusing today on talking about Windows, the endpoint, and how we're going to use the endpoint actually to defend against these types of attacks and, like I said, change the playbook. So starting in Windows 7, we made investments within the platform itself. So we had things like the trusted platform, module, smart screen, BitLocker, BitLocker to go. So we had kind of a mix of both data protection as well as trying to secure the endpoint. Within Windows 10, we continued those investments with Trusted Boot, Microsoft Edge as our most secure browser, um, as well as all the other technology that you see there. We continue these investments with the continual releases of Windows. And with a modern device, you can actually take advantage of the new technologies that we're talking about today um, based on virtualization technology and Hyper-V. So things like Secure Boot, Device Guard, Credential Guard, as well as device en encryption. 
So why are we focused on making these investments now, and why haven't our past investments been sufficient? Well, whenever you build technology on top of the OS itself and the hardware, you can do things like sandbox. And we do have application containers, but those just protect the, the applications. We're seeing that the attackers are starting to change their MO, and they're actually moving into the kernel with their attacks. We've seen this increase over the last two years, and it's dramatic. And these are actually exploits against the kernel that we found in the wild. And like I talked about, the traditional stack just really doesn't have sufficient defenses built in. Because once you get a foothold within the software, there's nothing stopping the attacker from being able to elevate their, pr their privilege and move down the stack. So the first step of our investment that we made was actually in doing isolation using Hyper-V. And we were doing that to protect the most sensitive components within the operating system and the things that the attackers are going after most, like your credentials. And the way we think about that is by isolating off those components, it's like a castle. We want to keep the attacker out of those sensitive components, and those are behind the castle wall. Continue on with those investments. Now we have Microsoft Edge with Windows Defender Application Guard. Same concept, still using Hyper-V, um, but now we're isolating your browser, in this case, Edge, um, within a container that will allow the user to go browse to untrusted websites. Um, but whatever happens out there, similar to the attack that you saw, it should be isolated with that in that container and not be able to escape and take over the hardware and give the attacker a foothold in the enterprise in the first place. So now let's go revisit the playbook and the attack that we saw, the Strontium attack. So now the enterprise admin has configured application guard within the enterprise. They've set up a network pipe, a policy where they've listed the websites that are the corporate resources and whatever they haven't included in the policy is untrusted by definition. The user again is gonna click on the link because they're within that 12% that always click on those links. But in this case, we're going to actually redirect the navigation for Edge into a container and we're gonna isolate that activity. So everything we saw before is still gonna happen but it's isolated within this new environment. The malware runs. If the browser has a vulnerability, it's still gonna be exploited, but now it's gonna stay within the container. So now when the user closes their session, everything that happened in that container is discarded when the, u when the user signs off of Windows. So now, similar um, to what we were talking about with that isolation, we're able to contain all that activity within the jail. It's not able to break out and get to the host. So now I'm gonna show you a, demonstra a demonstration. We actually have Windows Defender Application Guard um, in builds of Windows, and I'm gonna tell you at the end of the presentation how you can actually get your hands on that. So in this case, I have Edge here, and the start page for Edge isn't actually isolated, and we've set that up in a policy that's available, and you can actually change that if you want. But in this case, when you start Edge, um, I'm just running an edge that's native to the host. But now if I come in and I try to navigate to a site that the administrator hasn't configured as an enterprise site, such as msn.com, that's actually gonna open up now in Application Guard. And you see it coming to the front. And what's happened there is we've actually intercepted that navigation request and we've invoked edge within this secure environment. You can tell that you're in isolation because there's this tab up on the left that says application guard. And also notice over here on the task tray, Edge now has a new decoration on it with a shield. So that's how you differentiate between Edge running on the host and Edge running in the container. For users who would want to learn about what this is, we've also added a fly out here and they can click learn more. And that'll take them to a page where they can learn more about Windows Defender application guard. And there's little animations in here so they can learn what isolated browsing is all about, how Application Guard actually helps to safeguard their PC, 
in the story about the malware re removal that I talked about. All right, so back to the presentation. I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology underlying Application Guard. So, so here we have a just a standard Windows 10 Enterprise Desktop. It's running an inside view of Windows. We're just going to launch into Explorer now. This has got the default MSN start page. I have Application Guard turned on, which automatically starts the container and loads it in the uh, in private, or not in private, the containerized version of Windows, purely just running Windows Edge. As you can see, it's fully functional. Uh, Add-ons aren't supported. Saving to disk isn't supported. Well, it's right. It, <coughs> it is supported, but uh, depending on the policies that you apply. The operating system outside cannot access those files and neither can the clipboard or print etc. As you can see here you get the extra wonderful orange tab that shows you you're in an application guard protected mechanism. If you open up Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer will do the same thing. It will redirect that content into that container. So the, the general thought is uh, you could let your users go to the dodgy sites uh, and what will happen is that the session within the container will get compromised if it's a naughty site however uh, when you shut the machine down or log off that is destroyed job done so for those enterprises that require maximum sort of levels of segregation from internet traffic from their local PCs it's perfect yes it won't stop ransomware but all that the ransomware will do is encrypt that con that container for that session. So, big deal. You log off or reboot the PC uh, and start again. So, it's no excuse not to patch, but it will um, you know, protect those end users from that ransomware if you haven't patched uh, going forward. Um, there's no persistence unless you want it to be, but again, if you start punching holes in that, then what will happen is you'll just end up, you might as well not have it because um, you know, you're, you're allowing a, a path back into the host uh, environment. So just going through a few things just to show you, you can't edit settings because they're all set um, you know, sort of read-only, so the users can't change, try to break out. You can define all sorts of things. Also, you can define intranet based uh, sites as well so if you have websites that are local to you that you don't want to protect say your local intranet office 365 whatever then uh, you can define that within the, de the, co the configuration by group policy or editing the local policy on the PC again if you look at editing the local policy on the PC then it's going to get tough uh, this can be managed by Intune so if you wanted to push it out to your uh, on-the-go users then again that would also work they would have to be running the latest version so it will be have to be 1709 of Windows 10 which is coming out in October but beyond that then uh, uh, you're good to go so just a quick run through of the internals of what actually happens when you use application guard you will define your policy list whether it be all URLs, corporate URLs and that uh, can be managed through either SCCM or MDM and what essentially happens is uh, it will go through the policy store will be read through uh, uh, browser plugins and what will happen basically if you get a failure it will go into this new management hyper hypervisor security isolation component which will handle the redirection into the containerized version of, of IE oh sorry of Windows Edge uh, and then you will browse it's completely isolated from the environment um, and this is all built on top of uh, Windows Hyper-V uh, application isolation hardware isolation now obviously if you're running these features, there's a, the big gotcha is it enable you have to be running Hyper-V, so you have to have a compatible chipset, so it'll be a 64-bit with VT technologies, 
etc etc but you also won't be able to run things like VMware Workstation on the uh, host machine now that's not a problem for most users but um, for the pros if your organization employs this again things like the secure card device card etc etc you will need to talk to your uh, IG people your security people to say look can we have an exception or can we have a machine that's off network or, or, or something that's not managed to run that virtual environment if you're running workstation um, and apart from that that's this very quick demo thank you very much to the Microsoft guys um, there's no point in reinventing that wheel they did a far better uh, run through for me um, and I'll see you in, a, in the next one please don't forget to subscribe click the like button or comment below um, good positive negative I'm still learning from this so uh, any feedback is welcome